Church. Uh, so make sure uh, if you would like to come to Samuel High School uh, this evening at 5. Uh, next Sunday, uh, speaking of this affiliation, next Sunday at 3.30 uh, will be our, our vote on this affiliation, and that will take place in the, in the sanctuary. If you have any questions about that, uh, feel free to ask me in our leadership team. I'd be glad to uh, answer your questions about that. Next Sunday at 3.30. Uh, there's a new small group starting, uh, starting, I'm excited about that, called Mamas in Ministry. And so that's going to start on Thursday, September 7th uh, at 6 p.m. here in Lankford Hall. And if you have any questions, you can see my sister Catherine, raise your hand about that. Um, it's going to be a great new small group uh, for our, our ladies. Any other announcements this morning? Yes. I need for everyone to pray for Gail Barnhart. Um, she had back surgery last Tuesday. Gail Barnhart. Uh, prayers for her. I uh, certainly want to lift up the family of Jackie Elliott, a uh, longtime teacher, Talbot Man, who, uh, who passed away this week. Just lifted up that <coughs> family in the Talbot Man community uh, as well. I also had a prayer request for Bunny Hawkins, which is a family member uh, of Doris. Um, while we're taking care of it. any other prayer concerns, raises to lift up. I know we have a, a birthday in the house. Uh, 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 Kinsley is, is well, 10, 11 today. Yeah, so uh, happy birthday, Kinsley. Uh, yes. <laughs> any other prayer concerns, praises to lift up? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, it's so good to be in your house today. Uh, Lord, we thank you for your spirit in this place. Uh, Lord, we come bringing our, our concerns um, before you now, lifting up our, our praises as well. We pray that you would lift us, uh, lift us up as we come to worship you. Lord, fill us with your presence, uh, fill us with your spirit. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We've got several uh, folks going to church this morning. I want to call them out, uh, call them by name, and, and have them come forward. Uh, the Berry family, uh, so Ashley Berry and Matt Berry. And if you guys want to come on down, and also their children, McKenna Mary, Landon Mary, and Kinsley, hey, your birthday, you're going to the church. Uh, what, what a great present. Uh, also, uh, the birds here, or are they going to play the weather? Tina, Scott, Mary, are you all here? Yes. Oh, there you in the back. Yeah, come on up. And uh, Real Push Bar, come on up. And Amy Kirk, Jack and Kirk, come on up. Bobby, come stand with me if you want to. So it's an exciting time to lot of the church as we uh, welcome new members into the, the fold uh, officially uh, and are thankful for, for these folks. Uh, the Berry family is here, and Scott and Tina Byrne are there, uh, the rest of the folks who are here, Amy and Patrick Kirk and, and Bob Chin. Uh, most of these folks are joining either by the transfer of membership, but, but some of them are also joining by profession, professing their faith in Jesus Christ, which is a, a wonderful way uh, to join the church as well. And so that's, ask you, uh, in the presence of our congregation, will you be loyal to this congregation? Our church is supported by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness. If so, say we will. And it's our joy to, to welcome you in Christian fellowship to our, to our church family. Thank you. 
off those trucks. Oh. <laughs> good morning, everybody. Well, I say good morning, I expect a response. Story. 
It really means how Jesus loves us. You know, Jesus went around, he would teach him all over the place. And one day he was teaching in Jerusalem. And there was this group of people that are called Pharisees. And they always try to make Jesus look bad. Because one day, one of those Pharisees admitted, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And Jesus said, that's easy. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. That's the first great commandment. And the second great commandment is to love and get the truth. You don't know shut that in your heart. Okay. That's fine. All right. Let's go with the whole children's turn. All right. So, it says, the second one is, is to love one another as you love yourself. So, Jesus gave them two commandments then covered all the other ten. And the verses went. Just like that, Jesus had actually told them what love was. So, what I want to do today is we're going to need to pray. And we're going to thank Jesus for loving us. We're going to get this before we get done, right? All right. So, it's time for us to pray. You got it? All right. Y'all remember how we did this? Hands out. Here we go. Hands up. Hands together. Drop them. Now put your little heart in between your hands. Because you don't have to. Here we go. Dear Jesus, help us to always remember to love you with all the good. <laughs> <laughs>
uh, in your book, and also those that we've mentioned earlier in the service, certainly pray for them. Um, let's bow before the Lord in prayer. Gracious God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. Uh, Lord, we come with awe and wonder and reverence, but we also come confidently this morning because we know that we're your children. We know that the Holy Spirit is making intercession for us right now. Lord, you're hearing our prayers as we lift our hearts and minds to you. Lord, thank you for that great love that you have for us, and thank you for, Lord, the, just inspiring us to love others. Help us to do a better job of that. Lord, you love us so much that you sent your Son into the world to die for us, to save us from our sins. So thank you for saving us. Thank you, thank you for making us your children. We celebrate that hope today. Lord, we don't always understand the pain and suffering of our world, those that are sick and the violence, but Lord, we also know that you're still on your throne, that you love us and you care for us. And so we pray that you would help us to be better instruments of that great love. Lord, where there is hatred, help us to work for peace. Lord, where there are times of sickness, Lord, help us to pour out your healing. Lord, use us. We pray for healing of our land, forgiveness of our sins, or that we might turn back to you. We pray for revival in our community, in our state, in our nation, that you would establish justice and righteousness and the power to be evil would be defeated. We pray for our church today, both locally and around the world. We pray for your continued direction on our church leaders. Lord, as we make decisions and we make plans, to seek your heart. We want to be a, a church that follows you. Keep us focused on building your church, bringing men and women and young people, children, all people into your kingdom. Well, thank you for your guidance. Thank you for your leadership. Today, I pray that you would just bind us together in your love, with cords that cannot be broken. We magnify you, Lord. We glorify you this day. And we lift up your name, the name above all names, the name of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. So this morning we are finally coming in for a landing on our sermon series called Christian. And I'm hopeful with hopefully we've learned a lot in this sermon series. We've learned uh, foremost that Christian uh, wasn't the original description. It wasn't the original designation. When Jesus' followers were talking about one another, when they wrote about each other, when Jesus addressed his followers, he didn't use the word Christian. He used a, a different word. We'll talk about that. Uh, in a moment, but Christian, we've learned uh, Christian can be defined and redefined to mean a lot of different things. It can be watered down to the point where anybody is okay with it. To be honest, Christianity has a brand problem. We have a brand problem. The world views Christians as judgmental or moralist or bitter. Uh, many think well, you Christians, you, you, you're the only ones going to heaven and you're secretly relishing the fact that everybody else is going to hell. That's not what we do. A lot of the world thinks that Christians are quarrelsome and hostile. We have a brand problem, and, and that is a problem that we need to, to work on. But I think the solution can, can be found if we look at the original description, the original designation that Jesus uses when he talks about his followers. He calls them something different. Not Christians, he calls them disciples. Disciples. And then he defines what it means to be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And there's not a lot of wiggle room when it comes to disciple. Yeah, you can define and redefine Christian until you're okay with it, but disciple of Jesus Christ, adherent, follower of Jesus Christ, you can't wiggle around that. We find that Jesus kind of lays out the groundwork for what it is to, to be a disciple. In our theme verse for this series, we've got in John 13, verse 35. Jesus says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If 
if you love one another. I forgot that slide, I'm sorry. That's not that's not on you, Jonas. That's on me. <laughs> by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. You all know that one by now. We've been using it every week. Uh, and we've discovered that, that this should be the, the gatekeeper for all the other rules. Uh, this should be at the top of the list. And then the, the greatest commandment, let's talk a little bit about it here in the, the children's uh, sermon we're going to talk about it today. Matthew 22, verse 37. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment. It is. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commands. What Jesus is saying is that all the other thou shalt and thou shalt not hang in the balance of these two commands. Love God, love our neighbors. It's as simple as I can make it this morning. And it's so eloquently demonstrated in the, the cross. You know, we have crosses. I'm, I'm looking at a big cross in the back. Love God. That's kind of the, the vertical beam of the cross if you want to think about that visually. Loving God and then loving our neighbors. The, the horizontal beam. The cross is a good reminder of that. The greatest commandment. Love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and mind. And then love our neighbor as ourselves. All the other thou shalt and thou shalt not will be evaluated and hinge on love one another. The Christians, uh, there are a lot of loophole Christians that try to find ways around that. But don't be a loophole Christian. Be a disciple of Jesus Christ. And disciples, they ask a different set of questions. The disciples ask the question, what does the love of God require of me? What does the love of God require me to do in this moment? I want you to think for, for just a few minutes this morning about all the people in, in your life who have made a significant difference in your life, uh, good and bad. If you were to think about all the people who have kind of molded and shaped who you are, uh, and you would put them in two different categories, I think they would be, uh, they would kind of fall into one category or the other. You'd have people who hurt you, and also people who love you. Two categories of, of people who have made a significant difference in your life. Those that love you, those that have hurt you. When you go to a counselor, when you go to a, a therapist, that's one of the first things that they're going to dive into. Who are the people that have, have loved you? Who are the people that have, that have hurt you? They're going to dive right into that. And you know what? These people, it doesn't matter what they believed. It didn't matter if they were went to church or not or what they, uh, what they believed. It mattered how they treated you, how they behaved towards you. That's where I want to hit on this morning. Our faith is, yes, we believe. We believe in Jesus Christ. But the, our belief is, is foundational. But our, our belief requires something out of us. It requires that we put it in action. So I'm not talking about how we behave, how we actually live, what we do with our faith. Because there have been plenty of people who believed correctly, but then behaved very wrong. There have been plenty of good men, well, maybe they were good. There have been plenty of men with good theology, but then have abused their lives. There have been plenty of good women who, who were probably wives, but then, well, they, they, they lost track and, and maybe they, they hurt their own children. There have been plenty of people who believed correctly, but then behaved incorrectly. Prisons have their fair share of pastors and priests and seminary degrees. But at the same time, think about all the other people, all the many other people, fathers, mothers, of grandparents, the coaches, the mentors, the teachers, yes, some pastors, I hope, and, and you pastors, group leaders who have stepped up and shown up. They've spoken life into your soul. Maybe they were blood relatives, or maybe you know, maybe they were blood family, but maybe they weren't. Maybe they were foster parents or adopted parents. Maybe it was church family, but they stepped up and they chose it. They stepped up and shown up. The way that you have been treated by these people, that, that is a reflection of who you are. But somewhere along the way, Jesus' followers have gotten a little Confused. They've shifted the focus from belief, from behave to believe. 
from how we behave, not what we actually do, they've shifted the importance to what we actually believe, the intent of the commander the, to the letter of the command. And that's not how life has changed. Uh, that's not how life, Jesus came to be about life change, to, to make a difference in our life, not just to make a, a point. Jesus didn't say a new command I give you that you believe correctly. I think others will know that you are my disciples if you believe. That's, that's not what he said. Because believing is easier than behaving. Simply having the right belief is one thing. But acting, living, behaving, that is another. And that requires more of us. It's easy to talk about, but harder to do. A lot of Christians are just content in believing correctly. And I think that's why we have some of, some of our brand problems. Uh, the kind of the whole hypocrisy thing. You know, we, maybe we believe one thing, but then we act in another way. Many Christians have become content to simply believe correctly. And they make all their points. But disciples, disciples of Jesus Christ, they are content. As disciples, we are content until we've done something, until we have made a difference. Jesus says that happens when we love as he has loved. He says, love as I have loved. And so, as we're wrapping up this, this sermon series uh, this morning, we've been on a long journey, and something this is week eight in the series of, of Christian. I want to make it just as simple as I possibly can. As we think about that question, what does the love of God require of me? It's not just belief. Belief is foundational. Yes, belief is foundational. But it doesn't end there. We have to, it has to affect how we live, how we behave. So what does the love of God require of me and you? And the questions are, uh, it's a hard question, but also has uh, simple answers. As you know, I, I'm not really one of those three-point sermon preachers, but, but this Sunday I am, because it just happened to be three points that I have. So the love requires that you don't do anything to hurt you because you belong to God. Think about that. Don't do anything that would hurt you because you belong to God. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20 says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Church, you are not your own. You've been bought by the blood of Christ. So honor God with your bodies. Don't hurt you. Because when you hurt you, you hurt someone that God loves deeply. God, our Heavenly Father, He hurts when we hurt. It's just like when me as a, you know, one of the, some of those painful things I've experienced in life are my children being hurt. Not me being hurt. My children being hurt. God hurts when we hurt. So take care of of you so that you can honor God and you don't hurt Him. Take care of you so you can take care of the ones depending on you. We have people that depend upon us and when we hurt us, when we hurt ourselves, we hurt them. The problem with hurting you is that you eventually hurt and break the second requirement. Number two, love requires that I don't do anything to hurt others. I don't do anything to hurt others. Do no harm, as John Wesley might say. Don't do anything that would hurt others because they belong to God. Now, I'm not talking about military and law enforcement and self-defense. You know, the New Testament certainly explains all of that. Uh, defending yourself, that, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about things like don't lie, don't cheat, don't gossip, don't pressure, don't deceive, don't tempt other people. Don't hurt others because they belong to God. Here's the thing I know. Love has an edge. Love has an edge. We have to show both grace and truth. Remember that sermon about grace and truth that Jesus calls us to embrace both. Not, not grace or truth, but a, a full dose of both grace and truth. It's things the same like, I love you. I forgive you. But go and sin no more. That was Jesus' model of grace and truth. Love has an edge, but it's a scalpel made to heal, not a knife to hurt. 
A scalpel to heal, not a knife to hurt. Sometimes the greatest expression of love is telling the truth. Telling the truth in love. Confession, confrontation, yes, they can hurt, but ultimately they heal. Confession and confrontation, they, these are expressions of love. Sometimes one of the hardest things to do is to tell somebody the truth. It would be easier just to walk away. Love can be threatening, but love is never self-serving. Love, yes, it can wound, but it never destroys. Making excuses, making excuses for, for sin is not love. It is enabling. Yes, you may say, well, Jesus hung out with sinners. He did. Jesus hung out with a, a lot of sinners, but he didn't hang out with them to affirm and celebrate their, their lifestyle. Jesus hung out with sinners to let them know that they need a Savior, that there's a different way of living. Speaking the truth in love is hard, but it heals. Speak the truth. We live in a world that's so in love with lies. We live in a world that is so in love with lies that truth begins to feel like hate. Tell the truth, even if it's hard to do. Number three, love requires that we won't be mastered by anything. Don't be mastered by anything other than God. God alone is our master. He is our, our ruler. If you're mastered by something else, you will find it difficult to love as God has called us to love. Rule your appetites. Don't, be, don't allow your appetites to rule you. Don't be mastered by anything other than God. And maybe you're thinking about all the things that people tend to get addicted to, but when Jesus was speaking about this, he was talking about money and the love of money, how it's so easy to be mastered by our money to be owned by the things that that own that we own. So we have to think about what what is ruling you? What is ruling you? What is mastering you? And I hope it's nothing but God our Father. Church, when we leverage anything other than love, we get it wrong. We lose our leverage. But when we get this right, it changes the world. In fact, it did once. Long ago, there was a, a small band of disciples who who got together and they had no power, they had no political power, they had no influence. All they had to leverage was love one another. And they changed the world once. And guess what? We can do it again. And people will be drawn to this. They won't be coerced by this. They may feel guilty because sometimes speaking the truth has an edge, but it's, it's a scalpel to heal, not a knife to hurt. They may feel guilty, but they won't be condemned. Maybe we will be the generation that gets this right and so says, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Let's pray. Father, we have some work to do. We have a, a brand to copy. <coughs> Lord, help us. Help us not just to be Christians, but Help us to be disciples. Help us to go beyond our belief that it, would, that it would impact our behavior and how we live and how we work, what we do. Lord, may we not shy away from speaking your truth in love. Lord, give us the strength to live for you, to be mastered by you and you alone. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Watch the stand as we sing our Thank you.
Let's go forth with that living hope. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.